And you know, this is a sister that I really care about, care about a lot. And it's hard. It's hard when you love someone and you have to watch them hit rock bottom before they can come to their senses. But unfortunately, sometimes that's just what happens to the best of us. And it's hard to watch. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you for joining us here at Mindfulness of the Mess Speaks, the place where we are empowering women to grow and thrive. It is Friday. We are moving into the weekend, at least in uh, this part of the world, in New York City. And I just wanted to wish everybody a happy weekend because some people I know, they're working all week and you kind of look forward to the weekend for yourself. So, inshallah ta'ala, I hope that this podcast is reaching you in the best of Iman and you can just take some time for yourself to think about yourself and relax. So um, if you don't already know, this is a podcast where we bring um, two times a week mindful living advice, tips and tricks, and we are doing um, things on love, marriage, parenting, um, inspiration, tons of stuff. I even do homeschooling because I'm a homeschooling mom. And at the end of the day, most of the stuff we do is empowering women. Even if you're not a Muslim woman, you're just a woman in general, a lot of the topics we we focus on are just really woman related and, and going to be something for you. Inshallah. So if you don't already know, we're on the web, www.mindful-muslima.com. If you do want to reach out to me directly instagram dming is the best way um if you leave a rating for this podcast too also awesome so other women will know it's worth listening to and keep your questions and comments coming and on that note i'm really grateful because after i did the last podcast um some women had responded to me and you know the last podcast was about noticing the symptoms of when your amen is low or when you're kind of out of your best self and you know what's funny? You, like, you think it would be easy to notice when you're not in your best state. But the funny thing is, it's like life is just getting us so busy. We have so many things happening. Sometimes we get caught up in our own head and we don't always notice when we're like not in the best state. And sometimes it, comes, it almost happens like unconsciously. So I thought the best next thing is after I show symptoms of how you can notice you're not in a good state or a good state of be man, and then how you can get into a good state, Someone slowed me down and was like, wait a minute, how did we even get there? And I went, you know what's really funny? That is so part of the solution, even knowing how you got there in the first place. Because I mean, think about it. Let's think about it, guys. We cannot introduce new things in our life and assume that they're going to work give you a ways of thinking or whatever if you don't get rid of the stuff that got you to your problem in the first place. And I'll give you a perfect example, dieting. How many sisters are always trying to diet, right? It's like, you know, mindful, healthy living is better. Dieting's not amazing. But if you are dieting or you've ever dieted, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm supposed to eat these greens now. Oh, I'm supposed to incorporate more uh, plant life, veg and, and fruits and stuff. Yeah, okay. So I want you to see how well that works for you if you don't get like the Oreos out of your house in the big tub of like Haagen-Dazs or whatever kind of ice cream you have in your country that's big and fattening out of your freezer. I want Let me know how that works for you if you got like tons of soda in your fridge. What do you have to do before you can start a new diet? You have to clear out everything in your house that was like getting you to your undesired weight in the first place you need to get it out your life you need to clear up and free up space you can put some of the good stuff in and that is so related to what this sister actually it's a couple of sisters were asking about on instagram because they're just like how did i get to a state of low man in the first place and i'm like thank you so today i actually have a story to tell instead of just giving you like points tips and tricks i have a story and this is a true story because um i don't know how many podcasts you guys listen to me to or how many how consistent everyone is but one of the things that i i used to do actually pretty much still do to this day is i do um things with uh young women or teens could be anywhere between 13 and even 30 actually um i sit with groups of women and they tell me their stories and they ask for advice and we share information it's almost like a personal podcast and um yeah by the way um dm me guys if you i would if you live in the area of new york and i was actually thinking of doing a meetup because you know like sometimes it's really cool just to sit as sisters in a circle go to a place where you can grab desserts coffee whatever it'll be on me and we could just do a meetup, and I think that'd be really cool and nice just to chat as women in person. So if you are in the New York area and you think that's good, you know, maybe if I get a couple women they're interested, we'll do a meetup, inshallah ta'ala. And um, if you're coming through New York City, you could also suggest to be part of a meetup too. And so anyway, this 
is a story I have from one of the sisters that used to sit in our circle. And it's a sister I knew very well. Matter of fact, I knew her for years. And she told me her story, and I'm going to tell you her story today. I'm going to change her name just to protect her identity, but I'm going to tell her story all the same because it's directly related to this. How do we get to that low place? Does it happen overnight? And the answer is no. It's the same way that gaining weight doesn't happen overnight. It happens bite of food by bite of food. You know, there's this saying, many littles make a lot. And that's how this girl, Sarah, got to where she is. And Sarah didn't, Sarah was a really good person and she was just a regular, a regular girl out there just striving and doing her thing. And she didn't have any bad things in her mind. She wasn't the most religious person ever, but she wore hijab. She came from a decent family. She prayed five times a day. Sometimes she was late, but she was really working on it. She was trying to be a good person. She kept showing up to my circle of her, like my class, my halakha, and she wanted to just be a good person. But I, I knew her when she was, let's say she came in, she was like, 16 and you know she was actually in my group for a couple years and then all of a sudden I didn't hear from Sarah that much anymore she kind of got busy quote unquote right life caught her so she was actually 16 17 and then she went and she graduated college to graduate high school excuse me to go into university into college and all of a sudden she had some life changes and those life changes took her to just never show up at our class anymore. And it's really funny. So she stopped showing up at our class and a year or two went by and then she came back. And when she came back, she just looked like she was in a horrible state. And I pulled her to the side after the class. She came for like, showed up one of my classes so random. And I said, Sarah, is everything okay? You, I don't know. I feel like something you know, is off. I just, I know you so well, you're usually so happy or whatever I said to her like that. And she's like, wow, a lot has been going on. Do you have a minute? And I was like, yeah, of course. And then I said, you want to go grab some like coffee and something? There's this cute little cafe that's close by. And she's like, yeah. So I went with her, I sat down with her and she started to tell me her story. And so I wanted to tell you a bit of it today because I think it helps us to put in perspective How do we get into that bad, negative place? How does that happen? And uh, so with Sarah, basically what she described to me is she said, you know, everything was great. Everything was, I was in your class as usual. And then all of a sudden I, you know, I had to go into college. And when I was in high school, I didn't have like the most amazing friends, but I went into college and I said, you know what, now I'm going to focus on my studies. I picked a major. I was so excited. But you know what happens is, Eventually, you start getting around people. You know, college is a mixed atmosphere. She was among Muslims and non-Muslims. And this has this is not a story where I'm going to tell you, like, you know, haram, the non-Muslims were bad, and the, the Muslims were good. No. I'm going to tell you she was around all kinds of people. She was around Muslims who were not practicing Islam, like girls who were dating or drinking or guys who were smoking weed or whatever. Or like, she was around, these were Muslims. So she was around non-Muslims. Obviously, as Muslims, we don't do those things. They were just not practicing. Non-Muslims who were just doing the regular party life. So what happened was she would go to classes with other Muslims and, you know, they seemed like decent people, but sometimes they and other, other just, you know, people her age, girls would be like, Hey, let's just go to this party. Let's go to this cafe or like after class, let's just go have lunch with this group of people. And she was the kind of person, Sarah, I know her cause she came from like kind of a very strict family where she was only allowed to be around girls. And that's it. She's never allowed to be around guys. And that's just forget about Islamic rulings. Like that was just the family culture. Like that's just not what you do. So she wasn't used to that. So it felt really weird to her and awkward. Yes, in high school, guys would try to talk to her in school, but it wasn't the same thing as like intentionally going out after school um, and going and sitting down with a whole bunch of guys and girls chatting. And so she said, you know, at first when I started to do it, it felt really wrong. It just felt off I mean don't get me wrong I was kind of having fun sometimes like because somebody would say a funny joke or a guy would like flash you know a look at me and he kind of make me feel special Um, even he wasn't trying to hit on me or anything he was just like joking around in the group it was just a whole bunch of us just laughing joking and just getting um, coffees or, or whatever it was milkshakes or whatever they were getting she said but you know what happened was I started to get caught up in school 
And then I, then I had a roommate, she said. And I had to, you know, have this roommate. And my parents didn't let me sleep away. And this wasn't in our religion or in our culture. But they thought, you know, they trusted me. And the school was kind of far. So maybe it was good for me. Just try it out for a year, whatever. She's like, and my roommate, you know, she would, like, listen to all kind of crazy music that I was never into music like that much but it was playing all the time and she said at first I really didn't like it it was not even my style of music but she's like I just kept hearing it all the time and you know eventually it just became like part of living there because like this is just the way she is and I want to say anything to her I didn't know her that well and so she says this kept happening for you know weeks weeks and months and months and she's like then after a while she's like it just didn't feel as horrible as it first did it just didn't feel as awkward as it first did she started to describe to me basically that the music that at first sounded like nails on a chalkboard eventually sound like just the normal like she couldn't even hear the music when she came in the room it just became almost completely normal and you know after a while everything just started to become her normal life because this was the new way she had to live she was just adjusting to her environment but the thing is, um, you know, when you when you get into that after a while, things that maybe before you put in your mind as not good things to do and good things to do, you had these categories, the lines start getting blurred and she started getting confused. And um, by the way, guys, I want to mention I am in New York City. So for whatever reason, lately, it's really loud to be here. It loud around me. I'm so sorry. I don't have like this box where I can go hide for a private uh, you know, conversations. We're doing our best as we are moving, like I mentioned. So don't mind uh, any noises, guys. Just hang with me. So, um, you know, she she didn't feel right at first. But after a couple weeks, after a couple months, stuff just kind of felt like, well, that's what I got to do. And every time it felt weird, you know, she told me she did to herself. She just kept saying, it's not a big deal. This is only for a little bit of time. Eventually, I'll just explain to them that I can't hang out with them anymore. Eventually, like she didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. There were certain guys that were like, hey, you going to come to the cafe with us? And she knew for a fact she should never sit with some guy in some cafe random. But she felt bad. Oh, I'm going to hurt his feelings. Oh, what if he feels bad? Or some girls would make fun of me if I couldn't go there because the guys were there she was like eventually I'm just gonna tell them that like I can't do this it's not allowed for me in Islam so she kept kind of like putting it off putting it off putting it off and saying you know what like I should have probably stopped and told them but eventually I just almost like forgot and then she said you know what's funny we were sitting one day and we were in our regular spot we just like chill and we hang out for lunch together guys and girls and people started talking about religion there was something coming up in the news and she said they started saying a couple things that made me start to realize and doubt kind of what I believed for a minute she said I started to have these doubts and I started to think about like yeah like why do I have to do that yeah why can't I sit with these people anyway it's not like I don't have control of myself I got this it's not like you know like I don't know how to sit in front of guys and not end up dating them it's not like I don't know that I it's not like he's touching me or anything he's just like sitting with other girls and guys and he's just going on and on trying to con had this conversation with herself internally about why it's not such a big deal that she is, you know, every once in a while going to a party that she gets invited to and not drinking there every once in a while that, you know, whatever. And she said she just kept describing how all of a sudden she just noticed that her head was just flooded with these doubts. And she started thinking about them and, it, and, and all of a sudden Islam didn't make that much sense to her. And it seemed like it was always just getting in the way. It was annoying. And she said eventually, of course, also because, you know, college is like really big on how you dress and girls are about impressing other guys and guys with girls and whatever. She said, I noticed now after two years have passed, I don't think I noticed at the time that I started to be a little bit different with the way I dress. She said, I noticed that my clothes did get a little bit tighter. She said, my shirts got shorter, um, my hijab, like it didn't matter if it just kind of like hung and some of my hair kind of came out. She's like, I started to experiment with like turban style hijabs where my neck was out, even though I know my neck shouldn't be out, but I kind of put like a high collar shirt. So I felt like it was okay. But so she's just basically just Sarah went on and on describing to me how slowly, slowly things started to feel very normalized. And then she said, I got to a place where 
I knew I was getting into somewhere that felt wrong. And she started to describe to me how some guy that eventually was in one of those circles kept talking and she started to get to like him and eventually he started messaging her and eventually they started meeting on their own and eventually uh, she started talking to him. And then it got to a point where she started to have some strong feelings for him, but she realized that um, her parents would never let her marry that person so it wasn't going to work out anyway. And this isn't a love story where I'm going to describe to you how they ran away with each other and then, you know, she realized she did the wrong thing. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Sarah got to the point where she felt really, how do I say this? She got in this point where she started to get depressed. She started to get sad. At that point, she hadn't been praying regularly the way she would before, and she noticed that life just didn't feel good. Um, Her happiness was gone. She was getting anxious over stuff. She was getting stressed over stuff. She was getting um, sad, and she she couldn't pinpoint the sadness. She just knew that she didn't feel happy. And, and yeah, everybody around her was laughing and joking, but eventually it just didn't feel right. And she started to question her Islam. She started to question why she's Muslim anyway. She started to question a lot of things. And she got to this point where eventually she convinced herself that she's such a bad person that Allah wouldn't love her anyway. Like, what's the point? What's the point of even being Muslim? Because eventually she could tell that she started, like, DMing guys privately. She started, like you know going to places every once in a while when somebody did smoke something she might have took a puff just to pretend she could fit in she just had so much guilt and so much horrible feeling that she's like what is the point anyway and she was contemplating taking off hijab and she said i watched some youtube video and it said something and it caught my eye and it just shocked me and then i thought of you and i thought of your class And I don't know, I don't even know why I'm here right now. I just feel like I just needed to come here, but I I just didn't know how to face everyone. So I just told you I was busy, but I wasn't. I was just, I was just going through all of this. You know, it's really funny. Somebody told me a long time ago when I used to be part of these halakas, these circles and stuff, they're really, really good for women, by the way. And someone said to me, whenever you see a member leave, for a while you should worry about them and you should call them and ask how they are now i had dm'd or you know messaged sarah a couple times but she hadn't responded but it's true you know when you don't see people for a while when people get busy sometimes they're going through stuff so if there's anyone in your life that has disconnected and you haven't heard from them in a while check on them because sometimes they they need somebody to check on them and they won't reach out for themselves and sometimes they're just going to come around when they come around but that's what happened to sarah Now, what I want to tell you about Sarah is Sarah's story is not unique. It is not unique like the story of Barsisa, like I told you also a couple podcasts ago, if this sounds familiar. Bad things that happen to us, they don't happen overnight, right? We don't gain weight overnight. Nobody becomes an alcoholic overnight. Nobody becomes a drug addict overnight. Nobody nobody becomes abusive overnight overnight same thing with losing your iman it's something where you you go for an extreme high and you fall to a low what happened what happened in sarah's story that is is something that would happen in all of our stories where are all the dots connecting for us how can we know how to avoid losing iman how do you lose iman in the first place it's really simple you start testing yourself sarah put herself to the test Testing yourself, putting yourself to the test is the number one way to lose your iman. You will start to put yourself in situations that you feel you can handle them. You start to say things to yourself like, I got this, I can handle this, it's no big deal. But when you keep putting yourself in the same situation, hours upon hours, weeks upon weeks, months upon months, guess what, guys? It is inevitable that eventually it will chip away at you and the core of who you are and what you believe. Sarah kept putting herself in circles where she was tested by being in mixed circles of men and women, sharing ideas, hanging out for long periods of time, starting to go to parties, show up in places that she knows she did not belong, not only with a hijab, but in her dean period. And she kept exposing herself. She kept exposing herself to music with her with her um, roommate that had tons of suggested lyrics like "Let it be free," "Do your thing," you know, "Do you," uh, you know, uh, "Love," "Zina," all types of messages. When you hear that stuff in your ears and your eyes, 
it penetrates your heart and your in your mind your soul guys and this is something that we need to understand when you keep exposing yourself time and time again and this is my number one pet peeve i'm gonna be so honest with you is when people say the words no big deal and in, in uh, arabic i hear it all the time it's adi it's adi it's not a big deal so what i listen to some music so what i play video games x amount of hours a day so what i talk to that guy so what i did i went here went there so what it's not a big deal it's not like i got this i know who i am i'm strong no one's gonna touch me no one's gonna talk to me i can just tell it is a big deal guys because the human being is created that if they continuously expose themselves to certain things it's gonna chip away at their iman and it's that simple so it is a big deal if you keep exposing yourself and that's number one way how you get into that and you know at first these things feel like horrible and eventually when you keep exposing to yourself time and time again you become numb numb to how bad they are and then the next thing that happened to sarah is first she kept ex- testing herself then she was no, no longer numb it didn't feel excuse me was numb no longer did it feel horrible to her anymore and then eventually eventually she started feeling guilty because she knew she was not doing the right thing her guilt led into doubt and her doubt made her almost leave her islam completely And if you talk to anybody who has left Islam, they will describe the same scenario. I don't care if they're a college student, if they're a woman who married some guy and uh and then they and then they divorced him so they left Islam. I hear this a lot, especially with Americans when they when they become Muslim. They marry a Muslim man. They end up divorcing the Muslim man and divorcing him means divorcing Islam to them and then they take off their hijab and they start dating. And you're just like I thought you were a Muslim. It's so confusing. I've seen this so often. But what is the pattern that you will find from all these people? The same story, right? They put themselves to the test by being around groups of people that are not the best of friends influence on them in their religion they're not encouraging them to khair that encouraging them to good and following allah they're encouraging them to following their desires and eventually when these people go through this phase of that and then just it's numb and then you know then they start feeling guilty then they start doubting themselves eventually hell and heaven feel like not important to them so they start diving into just materialistic nonsense being so caught up they start putting crazy social media profiles they start exposing themselves a little bit more they start looking a bit sexier they start doing all that because dunya is all you have now this life is all you have because the akhirah you just scared of it like what 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 does it have for me what's up with the afterlife anyway We got to live now, YOLO. Remember that phrase was going on for a while, YOLO, live, you know, you only live once. No, you only live twice. I remember somebody did like a counter video. Yeah, you live twice. You live now and you live later and later is a lot longer. So, you know, subhanAllah, the story of Sarah is not a new story. It is the story of so many women. So many women that I have spoken to, not just on, uh, in my halakha has been over social media. And I want you to know you're not alone. And as you're going through the story, if your story is like Sarah's story, now we know the signs of low iman. I told you in the last podcast. So start noticing those signs. Start understanding how you got to where you are and start eliminating the things that are getting you there. Stop putting yourself to the test. Stop exposing yourself to difficult situations, assuming you're going to survive them, but knowing that actually that's not the truth. No one can survive these things day in, day out. We're human. We're all human. So the best thing to do is to eliminate things through our, I love to call it the five senses, through your eyes and ears and and, and just don't listen to things that are not good for you. Don't look at things that are not good for you. Don't be in circles of people that are not good for you. When you do this, when you eliminate this, you eliminate half the battle of you trying to maintain who you are. And at the end of the day, this is what we really need to keep doing in order to keep ourselves in a good state. So thank you so much for all the women that have suggested going into this. And I hope you guys can learn something from Sarah's story because it is a story of so many women. so many women and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you in the next podcast um, that we do on this same topic I might do a parenting one in between or a homeschooling one in between or a love one in between because I do have a lot of requests and the next one I, I for this one I will talk about how we can start to strengthen our man get ourselves back if we notice that we are like Sarah if we notice that we have been a little bit too quick to be angry if we notice we don't don't have any patience with our kids with our husband with our with our friends 
if we're having these things, alhamdulillah, we're noticing them now. What can we do to correct them? So Jazakallah hair, guys. Don't forget, like I said, to message me on Instagram. Don't forget to um, also rate this podcast and let everyone know if you're benefiting. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.